Hey, for everybody just tuning in, this week on Movie Time Machine. You know what the better part was? I went to go do it, and then all of a sudden it said, Welcome to Monster Closet. Should have known this movie was not going to have a plot. Do we know who, who picked the movie? Wacky hijinks of counselors. Chad picked this and then disappeared? Whack, whack, whack. We should have known. Plot, plot, plot. Whack, whack, whack. I was an hour in and was still like, I'm waiting for, because there was a deeper synopsis of it. Like if you read some, like a different person's review, like uh, further on IMDb and it's like, Rudy goes to summer camp full of rowdy teenagers. The head counselor is Tripper Harrison, the prank pulling girl, seducing fun lover, teasing both his boss and the counselors at the nearby rich kids camp. He and everyone else are sick and tired of always losing the Camp Olympics every year. See, there we go. I'm, so the whole movie I'm waiting for, oh, okay, the plot's going to be the Camp Olympics. This is going to be the build throughout the whole movie, and it's not. It just shows up, and it's terrible, and it could have been, like, the whole reasoning of the camp and, like, why like we would be rooting for this garbage camp to, to do something. Sorry, I'll get off my high horse. Hi, guys. How, how's everyone else doing? <laughs> wow. Tell us how you really feel. Dude, seriously, this movie was... I know Chad wanted to introduce this idea of, um, hey, if you didn't like the movie, how could you... What would you do differently? And I thought that was funny because I'm like, oh, no, I like every movie. Like, there, I can always find the good in a movie, even if it's that bad. This movie was terrible. It was so bad. And um, it sounded like, from reading some of the trivia that they weren't even sure Bill Murray was going to show up until the day of filming. How, like how terrifying would that have been that your headliner, the guys whose one name is going to be on the poster, that's going to be on the cover for everything. SNL is just crushing it back in 79. And then he doesn't show up. <laughs> let me, let me, t- I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to spoil it, but I watched YouTube. Cause that's what I do. Yeah. I've got, I've got all the lowdown on all that stuff. I'm, I'm going to wait. I'll wait till the end, but, but I've got the lowdown. Well, I mean, somebody else go ahead and jump in. Like uh, that is my two cents. Like where I didn't know what to expect of the movie, but I'd say 10 minutes in, I was looking at my watch 20 minutes in, I was looking at my watch like, and the whole time I'm thinking, thank God, this is an hour and a half. So, uh, I don't know. It, the only parts that were funny to me was when Bill Murray was doing Bill Murray things. And I think even the Olympics part had potential uh, where, you know, oh, they're what was it? Like the two little kids are swimming on a beach ball. And then one of the other camps like does a wrist rocket and pops the beach ball. Like we could have done pranks like that for days throughout this movie. And it could have been a lot better. But I think that this movie had a loose idea for a script. And I bet a lot of it was improv and just done on the fly and so i'm willing to guess that a bunch of these scenes like that stayed in the movie were probably not scripted it was like hey we are going to open this scene up in the bunkhouse uh, or in the girls camp bunkhouse let's see what happens and then they just basically had shenanigans for that day took the 10 minutes of footage and then filmed something new the next day my probably best guess on this movie so good for them it was the 70s and 80s and they kind of could do what they want it was just astonishing to me that what was the price for this movie it cost um uh, it was like 1.6 million oh but it was canadian dollars so it's not like real money them are half pennies them are hay pennies <laughs> i'm your time machine host chad and joining me this week mr fish rat factory himself host of the midwest mountain sports report podcast it's jamie Hey, Chad, good to be here. I, I don't know why I felt like I needed to speak for Chad there. It just felt uh, maybe I because really, <laughs> I was really hoping you were going to change your voice slightly, too. <laughs> maybe because he was it seemed I, you guys, I think Chad likes this movie and he's not on the show to defend himself. But did did anyone else get that vibe from the text or from our uh, from our uh, thread? I think Chad stands meatballs. I feel like, yeah, it got it, it felt like it was something like he watched when he was a kid. And so it was funnier to him at the time. Um, I don't know. Basically, if that is the case, good, good. I'm glad he enjoyed it. And I'm glad this movie made as much money as it did for me. I'm watching it now. It definitely, definitely does not hold up for me. But again, that is just one man's opinion. What did you think, Jamie? Well, I want to acknowledge two things here. One, James, for as long as I've known you, I don't think I've ever heard you be as outwardly critical of them like you love movies more than anyone i know and i feel like i really do love movies so the fact that you have such a negative opinion about it really says something about the movie and unfortunately it's one i share 
because I was so pumped to watch this. You know, you got because this this was a you know this was a blank spot in my um, '80s comedy uh, canon as well. But you know, you figure Ivan Reitman, Ghostbusters, uh, right. Kindergarten Cop, Stripes, um, and Bill Murray. It's like, oh my god, slam dunk! How have I never seen meatballs before? So I was pumped. And then we get the opening scene with Bill Murray. He's doing Bill Murray stuff. It's kind of like, oh, that's where Robin Williams got, you know, good welcome or good morning Vietnam stuff. You know, he's doing the announcements. It's pretty funny. And then, yeah, it just it doesn't go anywhere. There's some really uncomfortable situations with Roxanne and the other counselor that was, you know, 100 percent played for laughs at the day, but does not play. Now, I I think this is one that a lot of people just, you know, universally agreed to just leave in the seventies and move along. Yeah. And that's where like, I think um, when I was like, when we first were kind of deciding this movie and I wanted to make predictions of this movie, cause I'm like, all right, so this is probably a classic eighties camp movie. And that's where I was kind of making fun of the idea of, all right, so what kind of racy rapey sex situation are we going to fall into? That is definitely not going to fly in today's day and age, whether it was just the two dudes underneath the bunkhouse while the girls were, reading like a raunchy romance novel like that didn't even take it to the next step but then, then yes the scene with bill murray and roxanne where like he throw he throws her on the couch all kind of funny and lovingly she says no he's like what do you mean no then he they throw the, each other on the floor now she's on top and he acts like oh my god she just did this to me or whatever and get off me i can't believe you like i don't know it's just like these like different scenes where i'm like okay yes for the time I think every movie had that in there. It just it's something that doesn't fly today. And also we've seen it so many times over and over again, where it's pro- it probably was funny uh, in the early nineties still, but now it's not funny anymore. Right. Well, and I think with that, I, I don't like to be, you know, like, Oh my God, or, you know, high and mighty about stuff. Like, I don't like to be that guy, but there's some stuff that it's like, wow. You know, there's, n- there's literally nothing else to say except for, wow, like shouldn't have done that. Can't do that anymore. Well, and so, I think for maybe that scene with Roxanne, like I, that's what I was, I was trying to disconnect from that too, Jamie. And then, but it was like, I think Roxanne's role or a, the acting part of it where she, like she legitimately seemed like she did not want this to happen and was uncomfortable. Not like, Oh no, stop it. Tripper. Stop. <laughs> like, no, it seemed like she was like, get off. <laughs> so right. I don't know. It just, I was like, ee, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> Casey, what I think say the you? Thing that threw me off there. Was she explicitly like, did not provide consent in the way that like nowadays you would see that. uh, And we do like, I watched that and went, Oh, this is really uncomfortable. Like the wrestling and the man, he, it just felt like he manhandled her in those scenes. And, and I get it. Maybe they're pals or whatever, but uh, just comparing it to, to how, you know, you see things like that and, and you kind of cringe watching it now. Yeah, I agree. That was a really uncomfortable scene. That was uh, I think one of the blemishes that definitely makes this not, um, hold up as much um, and probably yeah you're right why people maybe leave this in the in the late 70s early 80s yeah um, it, I do agree with Jamie what you were saying about like this like on your thank god Chad's not here because I'm going to say the word bucket list but I think this is on like the comedy <laughs> bucket list for the 80s as well for me uh, where I think that's where like I said I saw Stripes I'm like wait there's another one and I'm like no let's do Meatballs instead but like Yes, between Bill Murray and Ivan Reitman, both like first time director, first time Bill's on the screen, they like first collaboration, and then they do several more collaborations. And those are the ones that we've seen. Like we like all love Ghostbusters. Well, I should say all for everybody. I don't wanna loop you guys into this, but between Ghostbusters, Twins, Kindergarten Cop, Dave, like these are all up my alley as far as Ivan Reitman. And by the way, when I started getting further up the list of Ivan Reitman, I left out Bill Murray movies. But um, those two together, like it's something I want to watch. It was uh, Groundhog's Day. Was that another one that they did together? That was Harold Dave? Ramis. I'm not sure if they did that. Oh, that was, that was Harold Ramis. Ramis. Yeah. Similar Dang comedy it. tree. Well, I think that Harold Ramis, uh, did he help with the writing or producing of this? He's involved in some way, shape or form, I believe, so. So from what I gathered, he was at least involved in convincing Bill Murray to join this film. And yeah, and I think the one piece of trivia that I did read about that was it was like uh, Jim Belushi, I think, was just coming off of 
Animal House, and I think was going to start doing that Steven Spielberg movie, uh, whatever, 1941. And so he he's one who convinced Bill also and was like, dude, you are going to be on the poster. Just do it. <laughs> like, you're that you're the headliner. So why wouldn't you take this opportunity to just do it? <laughs> so. So yeah. so I guess I mean, I can dive into that a little bit since that's kind of what we're talking about. But I believe um, uh, what's out right man, right? He I believe he was a producer on animal house and he wanted to direct it. Uh, but they chose uh, whoever directed at the time. And so from, and again, I, I, I should cite my sources. I was watching, uh, gosh, I'll have to, I'll find the channel before the end of this. It was a YouTube channel, something about, uh, good, bad movies or something like that. I think that was the name of the channel. Good, bad movies. Um, so I, I, I guess, uh, that's the source I'm using for these. This might just be anecdotal. Um, but it sounds like they, uh, originally, so the Reitman, you know, produced Animal House and before it even released, he was like, shit, I got to do something just like this. And, you know, some sort of comedy movie in this sort of genre because Animal House is going to blow up and I need to ride those coattails. And so he like went and enlisted this uh, buddy of his to write a movie. And they're like, well, what's the easiest thing we can write? Oh, a camp movie. We're from Canada. We went to summer camp all the time. So it was literally like lowest common denominator. We want to cash in on this this trend that's about to happen and again anecdotally from what i could gather uh the whole movie was kind of filmed and and viewed around the councils like the cits uh that was like the basis of the movie and it wasn't until after the fact they realized oh hey we kind of have something here with uh what tripper tripper was his name tripper yeah tripper with tripper and that kid and so they actually like went after the film was done shooting and everything. They brought Bill Murray and the kid back and filmed a bunch of side scenes, all the jogging scenes. Oh my God. So like this is how they built. They're like, we don't have a plot. Yes. We, need, we need to they care about these no characters. <laughs> yeah. And I think this was like after even trying, even like testing on audiences and no one really bought it yet. Yeah, the whole movie was originally just about the camp counselors, the CITs about them, you know, banging and all that stuff. That's kind of what they were trying to harness. But Obviously, we watched the movie. All that stuff was discombobulated. Who cares? And who knows about the relationships? They never dove into like the only time they dove into like historical character building was when they they made that guy off to be kind of creepy. Like he was hitting on this girl like it's our three year anniversary. And she was like, yeah, sure, dude. Like that's what what other history did they kind of try to build? What other character building did they do? Right. Um, and it, it, like the, the, even the introducing of those characters, like it was super awkward. It was like the camp counselors and like like that mm-hmm. one girl was trying to be funny. It was like, and uh, remember the romance that we had over last year? Well, mm-hmm. they broke up, but will they get back together? And then they pan to both of them and even they look awkward. And it's like, yeah. what are they trying to, what story are they trying to tell here? Oh my God. It's <laughs> like, go ahead, Casey, keep going. No, so yeah, and I have tons of other awesome little nuggets from that video I watched again. Uh, I believe it was good bad movies. Um, but uh, the, the Bill you're right. Uh, I think you James you were saying that they didn't have Bill Murray until the very last minute. You're right that from again from what I could gather, they uh they wrote that that part for him and he was like not interested from the jump. And then finally like they started filming in like the first day of filming that they got a call from his lawyer saying that he was maybe interested in doing it. And then by like, I think the second or third day he showed up and literally, I believe it's the scene where he like gets the rules and he's throwing them away. Um, That's how they made it sound. But I believe the, the first scene he filmed, he filmed in the clothes he showed up in. Like there was no costume. He just showed up and they put a camera on him and fed him some lines. And that's the genius of Bill Murray. He just made it. I couldn't tell you what scene that was. He looked None of that looked out of place, really, as far as the the movie went. Um, but yeah, so you're right. They they kind of pulled him last minute. He he agreed to show up last minute. Um, it was all through relationships, uh, I believe, through Harold Ramis and uh, what is that second city in Chicago, whatever the the troupe was that did that. Bill Murray is a part of, and then moved to SNL. It was kind of that same comedy troupe, you know, where friends of friends, and they kind of yeah. pulled some favors to get him in this movie. And yeah, Harold um, Ramis, yeah, he was one of the writers on this movie. So yeah. Okay, perfect. That, Just he getting was friends the together. <laughs> yeah. So uh, other anecdotes, apparently um, they were filming at a real camp just a real summer camp and the camp was super excited for them to be there until like a week in. And then they were really annoyed with it. Cause you know, it's a, it was a, a half-assed, not Hollywood movie. It was a Canadian movie. It was like Canadian film 
you know, comedy film. And so like a half halfway, like a week or two into filming, the camp was like, OK, we're over this. And uh, I think tried to get them removed. But then the film was like, uh, yeah, no, you signed contracts. We're here till we're done. We're here. So they didn't get kicked us, out. Yeah. Yeah. We get at least a month of filming and then we'll exactly. peace out. Well, then I guess the I guess they kept filming after the. So a lot of the extras were actual campers from that camp. And in the parents scene, those were actually the parents of the children at the camp. Those were all just people. None of the most of those were not actors. And so I guess after like the summer ended and all the real real campers left, they had like a month of shooting um, at the at the camp without uh, any kids there, which is where a lot of like the CIT scenes and, you know, the things without all the extras were, were filmed. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and then, yeah, especially with Bill Murray. So like, even with me ripping on this movie about not being great, I like with the idea of, okay, this is the movie we have. And then Bill Murray shows up, gets like, okay, this is kind of what the scene's about and probably just does his Bill Murray thing and just, and everybody's enjoying what they're seeing of this. Like, I mean, good on Bill for making the best with what he had to work with on that. So, and I do think it's funny. <laughs> I do. I think it's hilarious that they're like, oh, shoot, we don't have a plot. And then brought the kid in for like reshoots with Bill. And like then Bill agreed to that, too. Um, so to make this movie a little bit better. But man, I'm actually even looking at the poster right now. Besides Bill, sure, some of the like one or two of the faces are look like they were in the movie. But like certainly not the bodies of the women standing around him were not in this movie. <laughs> I don't know. It's just funny how they're just like doing up the poster. Like we I do. think people look at this movie fondly. Some people do. At least the, the guy, again, back to the YouTube video I was watching, the dude was talking about how much he resonated with this movie, mostly identifying with uh, the little kid, um, you know, that becomes kind of the main character of the film, just, you know, not having friends, being an outcast kind of thing. So at the time, I mean, no one probably thought twice about the weird stuff that we're calling out. I think, if it weren't for this film um, and in conjoined with like animal house kind of starting the, you know, raunchy comedy trend and, and, and propelling a lot of those actors and actresses we know and love. I think if it, if it weren't for this film, as much as it's the worst of the camp movies, we wouldn't have gotten things like, you know, wet, hot American summer. Uh, honestly, it feels like wet, hot American summer is, you know, the scary movie to this, the parody movie almost to this, but they did it so much better. Oh, for sure. Um, but but there were so many different camp movies, and I think this probably kind of started that trend. No, I agree with you. I think that after Animal House, you're right. Uh, riding on the coattails of Animal House into this new trend with another SNL castmate, like where that, uh, like you said, the Chicago troops are just basically mm -hmm. that kind of raunchy comedy. And this wasn't even that raunchy. I mean, the movie was PG, and it's a 79. Oh, but it tried to be. It yeah. tried to be. He would say some he said some creepy things about like getting it on when there's like clearly like six year olds at this camp and he was saying it over the loudspeaker. The uh, and I, then like it just really weird, inappropriate stuff for the, the range of ages at this camp. Well, and I remember I don't remember the specific line, but I remember that they said something about like maybe it was one of the girl counselors said something about somebody's wet dream, and I'm like, Oh, I guess those are all words yeah. you could probably use in a PG movie. <laughs> and and let's um, as much as there were no topless women, I think all of the, you know, what they would deem the age appropriate and attractive leads or, or characters, not a single one of them was wearing a brassiere. Not a single one. Oh, no, it was just it was it, it was tube tops and it was, you know, thin shirts all around. They were skirting the lines of PG as hard as they could to the point that. For someone viewing it out of time, I legitimately wondered, did bras exist in the 70s? <laughs> what in a actual, weird world that was. What a weird world. But in the spirit of saying nice things about this movie, I will say that, um, and you guys kind of touched on it with Bill Murray being Bill Murray, there is some really funny stuff in here. So I don't want to completely knock it like this scene where um they they have the first basketball game against Camp Mohawk and they're just getting their asses kicked and they all huddle up and he just goes... Well, guys, I think it's time to abandon the zone. Like I was, I was, <laughs> that was gut busting. It was like just one of those classic Bill Murray off the cuff one liners. Um, so it, it does have that in there. Um, but just, yeah, not enough, I think, to overcome the other stuff. Uh, guys, were you at all aware that there is a Meatballs 2 and a Meatballs 3? Oh, don't you worry. I've got the lowdown on those as well, my friend. Are you ready for this? I'm excited. Go for it. Okay. Meatballs 2 had a goddamn alien in it. 
are you I'm not lying to you and it was name was a meathead and it was in direct retaliation and trying to jump on the coattails sensing a trend of fucking ET so meatballs one jumping on the coattails of animal house meatballs two let's introduce an alien jumping on the coattails of ET then from 3 and 4 on apparently meatballs 3 uh the lead was Patrick Dempsey who is a grown up Rudy from the first one grown up comes back to camp and he meets uh, uh, the spirit of a dead porn star and that spirit helps him go on a journey to lose his virginity oh yes, Shannon Tweedy. Freezes. yep exactly that's where they dove directly into uh teen you know softcore porn comedy and then meatballs four is full up straight on teen sex comedy everyone chasing it it became you know the lampoon everything that you know we saw after that with with all those types of movies like porkies and all that stuff well and one really great thing that did come out of this um you know uh, the meatballs sequels notwithstanding was 1980 we get friday the 13th so it's like somebody watched this and thought huh what if instead of Bill Murray, we just killed everybody? You know, what if, what if that happened instead? No kids before they, you know, set up the camp. And yeah, instead we introduce a knife wielding maniac. So I don't know. It, it's just, was everyone going to camp in the 80s? And maybe that's why they felt the need to make all these movies. I think everyone went to camp. Did you guys go to camp? Uh, like one, two years, two years, like with Boy Scout camp stuff, but not like a camp like this where they just sent you out for activities for a whole summer. Like, uh, I mean, it was, uh, it blew my mind, uh, when I was like, was it the norm for six, six year olds to go to camp for the whole summer? Cause they had that one bunk house that was nothing but kindergartners. Well, hold on. There's, um, we should be pedantic here. I don't know that it was the entire summer. It's just that we kept hearing parents say, see you at the end of summer. I think it was only like a week or two. I think that's the kind of the premise of camp, right? Well, is Canadian summer entire... different than an American summer? Just but, but they never, uh, we, we, they never implied that school just got out and they were just leaving now for multiple months, but it, it implied see. that this was at the end of the summertime right. and that this was like the last big thing, right? You're going this to could camp have been and August and summer. they're going to be starting school sure. soon. Got it. I see what you're That's, saying. That was my assumption. Cause I, I think right in the beginning, one of the parents was like, see you at the end of summer. And I thought, Oh my goodness, how long do these kids? Cause you're right. I wasn't a, a camp kid. I think I did maybe day camps, right? Where you go and get picked up but I never stayed extended periods of time, but you see all these movies where they're staying for extended periods of time. And I have no idea what kind of context to put that in. How long, you know, were these kids staying at camp? I have no idea. All right. So hold on. There was a meatballs four with Corey Feldman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of Corey Feldman dancing like Michael Jackson. Just one last thing about that. Meatballs one and two PG three and four rated R. I'm sure because Mm -hmm. there was boobs. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry, Jamie, go ahead. No, I was just going to add to your guys' points. I, I think it's supposed to be a one-week thing because I did go to camp. Um, I can't remember how old I was, like 13, 14 range, but it was one week. It was a YMCA camp. It was awesome, by the way. So I could see why you know, someone would want to tug at those nostalgic mm-hmm, um, situations mm-hmm. and heartstrings. But yeah, not longer than a week. Which leads me to bling, uh, to bling, to bring up, when are we going to have a Salute Your Shorts movie come out <gasps> where like The Rock is like the main camp counselor? That was probably the most uh, the most I saw or watched of camp type things. I was a huge Salute Your Shorts fan. That's where all of my thoughts and ideas and uh, 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 beliefs, you know, in my imagination when I think of summer camp uh, is generally Salute Your Shorts. And in fact, I thought many of the scenes in this dang movie looked like the sets of that. I swear the camp they filmed at, other movies have filmed there. It, it's very possible. I mean, well, I don't, my only question, well, no, I did know that, uh, I just read this. They use the same camp. Gosh, I'm going to mess this up. Scratch it, delete it. I, I'm not going nowhere with it. They did use it for another movie, but it was like, uh, in 2008, it was like, oh, they use this same camp, but I can't remember what it was. I'll, fi- I'll track it down. But I, you'd think after you're saying that the camp itself, uh, was, frustrated with the the mm-hmm, team mm-hmm. shooting there that they'd be like absolutely never again um but yeah i have an important question to ask in 30 minutes into this podcast what are meatballs 
So is this my favorite part I remember is he called he called uh what's his spaz. Name? The, yes, he called spaz a meatball once. So Oh, they were playing tennis and he called him it. Yeah, so is the it just like, like a goofball to be called or summer camp? It was supposed to be called summer camp, but apparently there was another film in production around the same time. So I think literally until release it was called summer camp and then they scrambled to think of a name and it just became meatballs. Okay. Because, yeah, I just all I I was like, are they talking about boobs or is this a Jersey Shore reference? I I was entirely lost. But, yeah, I I do remember that part now. Not enough Italian food for it to be about the actual meatball. Right. Right. Well, I was going to say, so that's uh, the funny little contribution I have is I used uh, my Fire Stick remote control and typed into the speaker and said meatballs and it went meatball recipes and pulled up a bunch mm-hmm. of them. And I didn't realize that it did that. Uh, so good to know for if I'm looking for a fun recipe for dinner when I don't know what to cook. But uh, no, I had to actually go and type it in. So I made sure I got the movie. <laughs> so what I mean, did we drain everything on the movie? Is there anything else? Because I was going to say, like, we should talk about better camp movies and which ones we liked more. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I I do at the end or whenever we're done, I do want to get back to Chad's point, like how would we fix it? But yes, Casey, we should talk about that. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to jump on that right now. How would you fix it? You would do all the things these other camp movies did. Like I said, I think I think Meatballs was the mold. And they're like, look, this is a fun uh, genre. And everyone else said, yeah, let's do better. And, and, And in its time, I think Meatballs was probably looked upon as a fantastic film. It obviously gave you know, Alan Reitman, his career and him and Bill Murray just got to go do whatever. They got blank checks after this. So it was, it was the bee's knees at the time, but clearly we saw it could be improved. Which films did you have in mind? Well, you know, oh man, I can't even think what was the, what was the camp move camp nowhere. That was the one I watched over and over and over. With Christopher the Lloyd. Yes, that was Christopher Lloyd, where he was like a con man running from the law and he needed to just hide out. And so he, he I don't remember this. This kid didn't want to go to camp and he met him and was like, hey, if you make a fake camp so I don't have to go to military camp or whatever the hell he was going to go do, uh, you know, you, you can make some coin. You know, I'll get other kids to come to this camp that don't want to go to other camps and you'll, you can take the money that, you know, their our parents are going to pay you. And so they made this fake camp and they had a great time. Uh, that was, I watched camp nowhere uh, on loop. That was when me and my brothers watched that a ton as kids. That's probably my, my number one camp movie that I don't know if it's the best, but uh, clearly the nostalgia is, is very, very high for me. I like it. Um, by the way, the camp was used again in 2008's camp rock on Disney, which mm, I never saw, but oh, I think is it camp rock. I think that had one of the Jonas brothers and Demi Lovato or something like that. I think I it was remember. all the Jonas brothers, right? Maybe Weren't it was they, the band on the show. Well, I except think. for the one that, you know, was absorbed in, in utero. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jojo Jonas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't remember Jojo Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> trip, trip J trip J. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm going to I'm I'll go with my camp movie. It's kind of a cheat because it's not exactly a camp movie, but in Adam's family, values, horror, aren't you? Oh, kind of, this. kind okay. of <laughs> Adam's family values. The sequel, they send a Wednesday and Pugsley to camp. And those oh, are yeah. some of my favorite scenes in like any 90s movies where they, you know, they lock them up in the cabin to watch Disney movies and they're just beside themselves with being upset. It's awful. And the play they put or wait. I think I'm getting the play mixed up. That's that's the first movie. But um, yeah, when they take over the play and um, hog tie uh, the blonde girl who's mean to Wednesday, I can't think of what her mm-hmm. name is. But yeah, th- those were um, some of my favorite scenes in those two Adams Family movies. Uh, for me, I think the can't movie and God, I'm trying to think like I'm having a tough time thinking of which one my favorite one is because none of them for me are like super memorable. It's all of them. Like I want to say heavyweights, but I remember Ben Stiller mm-hmm. being crazy, but I don't remember the movie very well. So for me, I, I guess I'd have to go with the parent trap uh, with Haley Mills, like the 1960s version. Cause they oh, met sure, at camp sure. and I feel like that's a movie growing up was acceptable to watch. Like when my parents were around or like when I was young enough where like that would be on repeat because we didn't have Disney Plus. So you just made do with what you had on VHS and that was one of them. So 
I'm going to go ahead and say Parent Trap uh, all around a, a pretty solid movie. That'd be an interesting one to watch now and see if it still holds up. But I remember loving it when I was a kid. It's funny you bring up Heavyweights because I think that was maybe my second most watched camp one. I'll give you the quick synopsis. It was a fat camp that was awesome and everyone went there and loved it because no one actually had to lose weight. They were all just a bunch of fatties that showed up and had fun. Uh, but then the owner died and Ben Stiller bought it and it was like a fitness guy and he came and like ruined it. And that was the whole the whole movie was like the, them trying to fight back and not, you know, give in to Ben Stiller's new fitness regime. And is, it, <laughs> it gets this, pretty messed up at the end. It's great. Is the sequel uh, Dodgeball? Does he play the same character? Kind of. Yeah, basically. Because at the <laughs> end of this movie, he's called out in front of all the parents. And he's I think he like realizes he's effed and he's trying to show how tough he is. And he starts like throwing glasses on the ground and just walking through the glass because he's fucking nuts. It was like it gets real at the end of that movie before he like gets, you know, taken away. <laughs> Had but a better no, I, ending. That one, I think that one's great. Yeah, it had a better ending than Meatballs because it had the uh, go kart race with um, mm-hmm. Carp from the Mighty Ducks, and you also yes. get Goldberg, you get Keenan Thompson, you get like half the Mighty Ducks. In you know, and I think to, I think Heavyweight stole the whole you know finale triathlon thing from Meatballs. I think that they, as much as you're right, it showed up out of nowhere. I think James said it was like, what the hell? Where did this Olympiad come from? I think that was then. Um, in the mold and the prescription for all these camp movies because that became the big defining moment of heavyweights well and yeah i think it's like they probably use meatballs as like this like they have all of these things in there but the scenes are either too short and not well thought out like each camp movie should probably like because since there was no plot like we didn't care who won the triathlon or who won the olympics i mean exactly. clearly we wanted bill murray's team to win and but we never really saw the mohawks very often there wasn't like a crazy rivalry where one of the mohawks stole one of the other camp's girls and like he wanted to win her back and the olympics was the way to prove it and then he was going to win this long elaborate go-kart race where we're biting our nails of seeing who's going to win there's never that scene where uh it's a rain day and they're stuck inside and like there's everyone's like god there's nothing to do sure there is we can make pretend things happen like i mean there's just nothing that's a that's a clutch scene in a movie. <laughs> right so like there's just they had they had the potential for a lot of these things but it just didn't get uh it just didn't get executed very well but then again like first time movie first time people making a movie uh, a great idea is four scripts, just not sure how to get through it. And then also they're probably, like you said, they're on this uh, camp area for like a week before every, uh, as they're trying to figure it out and everyone's trying to kick them out. So they're just trying to hustle through and get this done because they promised a studio they'd make a movie. <laughs> okay. So we didn't talk about it yet. I got, we got to circle back. Sorry to change the subject, but we got to talk about how, how awful and it doesn't hold up that the rich white person camp is also called the Mohawks and clearly like appropriates all native culture and has their, their cheerleaders at the basketball game, you know, wearing indigenous looking outfits and swinging, uh, you know, axes. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Despite all the sexual things that don't hold up now, my gosh, would that get them canceled now? I, I just thought that was footage from a Braves game. Is that not what that was? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Chop, chop, chop. Uh, says the Rockies fan. Lay it on. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Lay it on. <laughs> yeah. Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. You too. Yeah. I'm looking at you. You got Patrick Mahomes. You also yeah. got the Tomahawk chop. I'm just saying. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, that was rough. That was that was rough. Well, and that kind of um, leads into my uh, idea of how I would fix this film. I, I just would have made the leader of Camp Mohawk. Um, just a more, um, just a more uh, on the nose, rich white asshole, and then like the movie would have been him duking it out with Bill Murray. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I have mm-hmm. the better camp, and I couldn't pick anyone. Just like my seventies and eighties um, actors references are not as good, but I Steve Martin maybe. I feel like he could play that, um, you know, straight laced A type guy, and kind of really lean into being an asshole. And then we would get Steve Martin in this movie too. So that would be a that would be my way to fix it i think my way to fix it is just to have a coherent story from the jump <laughs> instead of jumping i mean they i believe they admittedly jumped in with with very bad you know they they were just it was a cash grab they didn't have a good story to start with they just had an idea and they wanted to pursue a comedy um 
but again, it's hard for me to to really dog him because, like I said, that it, it spawned a lot of other films that I really enjoyed, and it clearly helped, uh, you know, propel Bill Murray into stardom, and he's uh, he's the goat. Like uh, Ernest goes to camp. I believe that was the first Ernest P. World movie, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. followed by which then started the whole franchise of Ernest Saves Christmas, Ernest goes to Splash Mountain, Ernest goes to jail. Ernest scared stupid. <laughs> That's true. Ernest, yeah. Ernest rides again. How many of the God, <laughs> we need to do an Ernest movie. <laughs> Jim Varney, where are you at? Oh, That's man. true. James, you're right. And Casey too. Like Jason does not go to hell or to Manhattan or to space. If he doesn't start at Camp Crystal Lake. Forgot about Jason. True. It's true. Fucking space. Oh man. Summer camp. And then I don't know. Also like, then we could do a deep dive into this, I'm sure. But the summer camp thing, it seems like it would be the most cost effective way. Like you're going to some place like the thing that would suck is like lighting, lighting and weather control. But and maybe a little bit of sound. But after that, like you being able to rent out a space where there's a few cabins involved and you're in the woods and then you just create the shenanigans with what you got. I mean, that's a fairly cheap movie in my mind to make uh rather than blocking off new york city streets and renting full buildings and doing stuff on a sound stage which again you can control things a lot better but i feel like uh, renting out a camp uh in the 80s might have been the right way to go about it yeah not to circle back i think uh i don't know that i gave my full review but i agree with you guys i don't think it was a fantastic film i don't hate that I watched it. Uh, there were a few bits that I laughed at. I actually am glad that they went the direction of making the movie focused around Bill Murray and the kid. Cause there were a few, I thought that kid was great. He was adorable. I thought he was legitimately like nervous in those scenes. Either he's a great actor or he, he was just perfectly cast for that, you know, nervous shy kid. Um, Cause some of that was just, you know, super cute. And, uh, but other than that, you know, it, it doesn't hold up that great. Um, I don't think I would watch it again uh, other than, you know, Bill Murray kind of saving a few scenes. Uh, it was, it was kind of mediocre. I thought the, the whole shtick with, uh, you know, making what's his face and Mickey, you know, sleep in random places. Sure. It was funny, but man, man, it was just not believable. There's no way that dude sleeps so, so heavily. And if he's the dude in charge of this place, why is he asleep? Like when everyone, when the parents are showing up, for visitors day why is he asleep like after the buses have taken off does this dude work ever or does he just sleep until noon every goddamn day and if that's the case then it is believable that they can get him hidden places because the dudes are responsible he's probably a drug addict <laughs> morty dude's they did coming down on meth every morning <laughs> just doing meth till 3 a.m uh can't wake up until 11 and so they can just hide his damn bed because he is out like a light on the come down oh uh, meth created at camp I don't remember the name of this camp's name. Yeah, <laughs> it's from the 79. It was a lot of cocaine. That's camp what it was, it was Camp cocaine. Camp it was cocaine. Camp North Star, wasn't it? North, North Star. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was that's Camp North Star. Star. I was trying to say it was like probably <laughs> Camp Cowboys, but like that's not right. James, do you have any strategies for saving this movie, making it better? Um, nothing different than what I've kind of said. I think they had all the makings like they had. Look, it's like when you're writing a paper in middle school and you're like, oh, shoot, I have a body, but I don't have an intro and a conclusion. Um, It was like they just (laughs) didn't have it all together. They had an idea and then they didn't slow down to bucket these ideas Um, where and maybe Bill didn't want even a piece of this. But if Harold's like, hey, look, I'm going to write four scenes, one for the girls bunk one for the guys counselor's bunk, one for a camper's bunk and one for underneath the bunk house, whatever. Like, and then they're like, can you take care of like two of the lake scenes? They just divided these things up like into like what they wanted it to be about. It almost seems like it could have been better, better that way. Instead. I think it was too many hands in the cookie jar is what it felt like to me. And they weren't sure. Like it was a lot of let's shoot and see what happens. I think is what happened, especially when Bill showed up. Because Bill's like, you know, like maybe Bill read some of the script and like he kept some of the lines and then he winged the rest. Or they were just like, hey, Bill, we know you're good at improv. Can you just help us with this? Um, who's to say? 
So I think it's just if it, it was a little th- better thought out, then I think it could have been one of the greater camp movies in there. And who knows, maybe some of the things that they did not film, they sold to somebody else. And that's what became Friday the 13th. Who knows? Well, you know, speaking of improv, uh, apparently the scene where, you know, they're sitting around camp and he right before they go, it's like night one of the Olympiad. And he does the whole, it just doesn't matter, that whole speech. Yeah. Um, it was like the night before and Alan Reitman apparently said, we need some sort of rally the troops speech a la Animal House. He basically said, I want the Belushi <laughs> speech from Animal House. What can you do? And that was all improv. And then none of, no one knew what he was going to do. Bill Murray just made that up. Or the, he, he knew the phrase. It just they came up with like, it just doesn't matter was going to be the thing. And that was good enough. Uh, but that whole scene was improv. No one there knew that he was doing it. Um, but it ended up being probably the, I don't know, most organic feeling scene in the movie. For sure. And one of the more memorable ones. And yeah. you're not wrong. Like, I remember when watching that scene, like he got to the point where he goes, it just doesn't matter. And there was like a little bit longer of a pause and like mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. cast and crew didn't know what to do next. But then it became into like the chant of it just mm-hmm. doesn't matter to rally the troops. And like, so you're right. It felt very organic and very very uh improv and like where the, they didn't know where it was going and then once he started chanting it then they kind of realized oh this is our time <laughs> so uh yeah i think that there were several scenes like that which i think played and made the cut um and then i think there's several things that probably didn't make it because it didn't make sense but um a little bit more a little bit more organized and i think it would have been executed quite well um i'm glad that this movie was uh the canvas at which everything else um kind of aspired to be or to like, Hey, let's do this, but better. That's all I got. <laughs> I mean, right? Oh, yeah. What else is there to say about this? Right. I, yeah, to be honest, I'm surprised we did 45 minutes on this. Cause uh, I started ranting right out the gate. <laughs> Good luck cutting this together. Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, wah, wah, wee, wah. Well, guys, uh, real briefly, like, uh, let's just go through. What are what are we watching? What's good? What do we got? Oh, Jamie, yeah. Jamie, what's <laughs> we normally off? do that at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, we let's do, do it at the end. Good job. That's I right. know. I'm sorry. I wanted to reel it back in, but I was That's like, oh, I just started ranting and we started recording. So, uh, but yeah, Jamie, what are you watching right now? Okay, let me think, because I, I will not answer euphoria in a third straight episode um but i am savoring those episodes I, i'm really terrible at binging but that's okay i don't like to binge um so i'm sprinkling in some sopranos those are the two shows that i'm uh i'm uh slow rolling right now starting with season one it's just great um i think the next episode is meadow doing the college tours with tony i can't wait and it's opening day so i watch a little bit of baseball today that's what i've been watching I was just on a trip. Uh, me and the family went to shiny, lovely Las Vegas. It was fantastic. Thank you for asking. But when Viva I was on the plane, Las Vegas. Uh, I got to watch Free Guy, which I feel has been shoved down my throat uh, via YouTube ads, at, which are the ads that I see the most often. I swear I see Disney Plus Free Guy ads over and over and over. And it's the same scene with the girl walking down the street singing the sweet, sweet fantasy song by Mariah Carey. It's that scene over and over. And over. I saw that forever <laughs> over and over and over and over and over again. And then I finally watched the movie and you know what? Gosh, darn it. I thought that was a great film. I, I'm sorry. I don't want to say great film. It wasn't like a cinematic masterpiece by any sense of the word, but it was a pretty darn good video game movie. I laughed. I love Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I love the dude from stranger things. He's fantastic. Uh, I love anything that uh, Taika Waititi touches. Anytime I hear his voice, I laugh. It was just, it was great. I will look past all the glaring uh, technical things that aren't, that can't actually happen. Um, And, you know, why did they, why did someone uh, build a video game and give this NPC character an entire routine that no player would ever see that like, it takes an immense amount of computing power just to do that for no one to see. Um, So it doesn't really make any sense. Uh, But if you look past those things, it was a fun (laughs) movie. I liked it a lot. I really enjoyed Free Guy. I thought you would too. So did I, I, yeah. I loved I it. I do like that you went to the point of like, you know, as a programmer, it doesn't make sense of this. And I'm like, it makes oh, no sense. whatever. No sense. But, but it allowed you also to laugh at like when people were jumping into walls and getting stuck and <laughs> other different video game things that happened. So um, me, I'm re-going through Yellowstone. 
Uh, so if you haven't watched that, so like I'd say, speaking of the Sopranos, if you haven't watched Yellowstone, it's basically the Sopranos, except for it's Montana. Um, and then, uh, so I'm excited and I, I'm excited going through that again. Um, and then I did watch, speaking of Ryan Reynolds, I'll loop it back into both of your guys' situations. I just watched the Hitman, Hitman's Bodyguard because it showed up on IMDb. And then on HBO is the Hitman's body Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so again, Ryan Reynolds, Sam Jackson, uh, Selma Hayek. Um, if you haven't seen those ones and you're looking for a movie just to have on and kind of giggle at and not take it too seriously. Yeah. It's exactly what you're expecting a Ryan Reynolds and Sam Jackson movie to be. Ryan Reynolds is witty. There's a lot of action. Sam Jackson says the F word countless times to where they make jokes about it. Like how he ruined the word mother effer <laughs> to, to Ryan Reynolds. And so I don't know if you haven't watched it, I think two very enjoyable movies for what they are. Um, and then I'm excited that tomorrow in theaters, I'm going to go see everything everywhere all at once. So I'll be able to give you guys my two cents on that one. I can't wait. I That's very high on my watch list. Yeah. Well, sweet. That does it for this week's episode of movie time machine. Thank you for listening. Check us out on Twitter at movie time machine pod. Is that our handle? Uh, hit us up there. Uh, you know, we'll, I don't know that we check it that often, but if, if you go up there and, and send some stuff, you know, we'll we'll talk about it. Why not? We'll answer your questions. Whatever. We'll, we'll talk about that. Don't threaten us with a good time. Uh, but anyways, new episodes drop, what, every Friday? Something like that? What does Chad normally say? I'm making this stuff up as I go. Who knows? Well, new episodes just, drop all the time. I just want to say thanks to Chad for hosting tonight. You've, done, you've been great, Chad. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys. It was my pleasure. Maybe That's Jamie your, should show up next time. Is that your best chatter? Were you just saying it normal? <laughs> I, I was know. trying. I was trying. Realized I wasn't finding it, but it was too late to abandon it. Oh man! Sorry, I'm Chad. Excited. I'm excited for him to find this. <laughs> That's all we got. Have all a right, good we'll night, everyone. We'll, we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.